Hi everybody, this is a demonstration of how to do part two for the language creation project. So remember last week you guys picked phonemes, sounds, consonants, and vowels to use this week when we make words. I also created an allophone from one of my consonants, the P sound, following the English rule that when the P sound begins a word, there is no, there's a puff of air, and when it follows a consonant at the beginning of a word, there's the puff of air is swallowed. So, pin, you feel the puff of air. Spin, you swallow the puff of air. So, part two, this week, we're going to make words using the consonants that we've picked. And you need to make nouns, verbs, pronouns, prepositions like in or on, um, and then a couple of kinds of affixes, something to derive a word from a noun to a verb, a thing to an action, or vice versa, and something to inflect a word, to make it plural, like there are many, or there's one, two, and many, so, however you want to do it, um, or to change the gender, like if you have a gendered language that includes that in the words. And so I've taken my consonants here and made a few words just to get started. So I'm making slime for my instructional video. So I need a word for slime. And so I picked p, i, sh, u, p, sh, u from my pre-selected consonants and vowels last week to make up a brand new word to mean slime. Same thing for baking soda. I picked others of my consonants to make up a new word, spood for baking soda. And notice I've indicated or shown the example of my allophone in these two words. So make your nouns, make some verbs, make some pronouns like he, she, it, things like that. And then um, I have prepositions like if you're baking you need to put baking soda in with something. And so I have shu for in and esh for um, on. And then for affixes you need to derive something, thing to an action. And so I'm going to derive slime to be, I have a bucket of slime versus I slime somebody by essentially getting them all slimy. So I've made it a verb, and the way I'm going to do that is put E as a prefix onto my noun. So e pishu is to slime somebody. Pishu alone is slime, the noun. For the second kind of inflection, or affix, I'm going to inflect and make a word plural. So I'm going to make baking soda plural, or I've made both of them plural by adding an oo sound at the end. So pishu oo means slimes. There are many different kinds of slimes in the world, um, or many. We in English would say slime, but I've made it plural pishu oo. And um, to make baking soda plural, spudu would be baking sodas. Okay, for part 2b, this is where we make our first sentence, sentences using the words that we've created. I've written in blue some additional words that I wrote just now so that I can make some complete sentences for us. These are called frame sentences because we're going to make three declarative sentences and then turn all of them negative and then turn all of them into questions. So we're using a pattern to figure out how to say simple statements, declarative, how to say the opposite of those, and how to make questions in our language. And the sum of that is going to be a rule about how our language word order functions, um, and also a rule how to turn something into a negative. Okay. So, my first declarative sentence I'm going to do is, my daughter makes slime. So to write that in my language, I am going to do, start with daughter, so fe-shu-fe-shu-my-pe, so daughter my makes jeduth, or yeduth, slime. Pishu. So daughter mine makes slime. Oop, and I actually changed that from what I wanted my word order to be. So I'm going to change that really quick. I wanted to do subject, object, verb. So subject, daughter mine, slime, object, makes. So we put slime in here. Pishu. Makes. Yeah, 
juice. So my daughter makes slime. They shoe pe pishu yedus. There we go. Now we need to make it negative. So my rule for turning something into a negative is to put on a prefix of be. So I will add be to be yadus. Be yadus means not make. So I rewrite my sentence. Fe shu pe pi shu be yadus. My daughter doesn't make slime. They shoo, pay, pee shoo, be And then I want to turn this into a question. Will she make slime? And I've created a preposition that is a general question. It can stand for any sort of questioning of any sort. And so I'm going to start my sentence with beu, beu, fe shoo. Pe, pi, shu, ye, dus. And there's my question. Hi everyone, I wanted to fix a mistake I noticed. For the third sentence, I changed to she rather than my daughter. And so this segment, they shu, pe, should actually be, is my daughter should actually be et, et. So, beu et pishu jaduth is how we would say, we sh will she make slime? Kinds of frames for three different sentences. So you'll end up with a total of nine sentences for part two, and a rule about the order of words, subject, object, verb, verb, object, subject, subject, verb, object, like we do in English, a rule about how to turn things into the opposite or not, so make, don't make, and how to do a question, whether you make a single word for it or you make up separate words for who, how, why, when, all those kinds of things. It just really depends on what you need to say in order to do the teaching of the thing that you're teaching. Okay, so for part 2C, where you will just write 18 more sentences. Make them useful sentences that are relevant to the topic you're going to teach, and they can be any sort of format you need. Declarative, questions, opposites, compound sentences if you're feeling brave, um, but the simpler you keep it, the more simple grammar you use, the easier it will be to write your script. And that's coming up in a few weeks, so you don't have to write a script yet, but I would be strategic about the sentences you write in this last part for this week.